YouTube video, we're actually in a proper studio in Soho, which is like the heart of the media in the whole of the United Kingdom. There's a keyboard here, any moment I might start playing. But we're going to tell you in this short video the five must-do actions for new authors, the things you've got to have in place if you are going to be successful at selling your books. So Mark, the number one thing that you should do written your book, what's your first thing? First thing you should do is have a mailing list set up. So as soon as you're ready to hit publish on a, a, a platform like Amazon, you need to have your mailing list set up and start to harvest those email addresses. So can I ask a really basic question? What is a mailing list? So a mailing list is uh, it's just a place where you collect the email addresses of readers who've uh, been interested enough in what they've read to give you that, that, that those details so you can contact them when you have, say, something else to release. Uh, some news, perhaps, just a way to manage the communications between between you and your readers. OK, and this is a very new thing, so traditional authors perhaps don't know really who's reading their books until they, somebody writes to them as a bit of fan mail, but most people don't do that. That's right, when I was originally traditionally published and I didn't have any, any communication with my readers whatsoever, which was one of the most frustrating things about the whole process for me. So it's not that new, I mean, it's been, uh, it's, it's, it's been something that independent authors have been doing for a long time, and before that, internet marketers, and that, of course, is, um, we can learn as authors an awful lot from that kind of business, um, how to uh, find our readers or customers, of course, that's also what they are, um, and be able to manage the relationship between, on the one hand, the, the reader, on the other hand, the author. Okay, that's number one. Number two well, is? Number two, I'd say, is, is you need a website. So you need somewhere that you can um, plant your flag, some, a piece of digital property that is your own. So I love the platforms that I sell my books, and I love Amazon, I love Apple, Barnes & Noble, Kobo, all those places. But um, that they're not going to, uh, well, first of all, they're not going to give me those email addresses of the customers that go and buy my books. So that's, that's another reason why you need that, that mailing list. But I want a piece of digital real estate that I can call my own. So it's very important for me to have that set up. It doesn't have to be expensive. Um, and the main thing that you're going to have on that website is the facility to take email addresses. So if someone reads your book and then uh, navigates through a link at the end of the book to your website, you need to make it very, very obvious that they can sign up and, and say, get a free book from you by, by doing that on your website. OK, so web presence. And number three, I guess, is linked in a way, which is? Social media presence. So it's very important um, also to maximize the, the communication channels between you on the one hand and your readers on the other hand. So a website is a good way to do that. Some people might say blogging. I don't recommend that. I think it's too time intensive for low return. But something you can definitely do and you should do is, is, is maximize your social media presence. So I would say pick one that you are going to go big on and then have one as a supplementary. One platform. One platform. Yeah. So obviously we've got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, Pinterest, lots and lots of, of different channels available, new ones coming in all the time. I, For me personally, I would say focus on Facebook. It's the biggest. Uh, it's got the best advertising platform, something that's, that I'm really big on. Um, and I have as my second, my fallback, something that is a little less serious but still valuable. I use Twitter quite a lot. but. You know, people will be different, and it also depends on what you're writing. If you're writing young adult, you might want to be on Instagram or Pinterest more than Facebook, potentially. Yeah, so that's important to understand. Different demographics move towards different social media platforms. Here are on YouTube, hopefully, is where people are watching this. But Facebook, I love Facebook. It's a big part of my community where I live, but my daughter probably won't join. I don't know. Maybe she'll join Facebook in the long term, but she's on Instagram. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, research your audience, find out where they are. Um, and then make make steps to try and interact with them on their, their platform of choice. OK, we're racing through these. Top tips, that was number three. Number four, then. Number four is I think you've got to approach um, the business of publishing with the assumption that you'll be successful. So assuming that you will be successful, make sure that things like um, you're incorporated. So it's more tax efficient in this country um, and... You know, uh, viewers should take local advice if necessary to find out what the situation is where they are. But in this country, in the UK, it's t generally more tax efficient to have a company set up to handle the income that you'll be generating from the sales of your books. Okay. So, and it's easier to do that right at the start than to try and go back and retrofit things when you are subsequently successful and then you've got copyrights that you might own, some that your company might own. It's very difficult to untangle that. So yeah. get that done nice and neat and tidy right at the start. Yeah, and we should say, obviously, you're an ex-lawyer, Mark, so you'll know it's not for us to tell you exactly how to do this, and it will be different in different countries, but as you say, take some advice. And there's also another thing is that occasionally authors 
uh, with the best will and intention in the world can end up in a liability issue with something they may have written in a book, somebody thinks they're identified, uh, and if you haven't got yourself set up as a limited liability company, you are putting things on the line, like your house and all the money you have. If you've got a liab limited liability company, that gives you some protection there. Absolutely, yep. Okay, uh, other legal advice is available. Absolutely. And our, <laughs> our fifth, the number fifth, five. The fifth and final thing is, is kind of a mindset thing. So it's be professional. By that, I don't just mean treat the business side of, of, of your, you know, the, your writing business professionally. It's treat your manuscript professionally. So um, once you've finished your novel and it's ready to go, um, it's worth investing in an edit. Um, Self-editing is difficult for most people. You'll miss things. I tried to do my first book myself, did a terrible job of it, and there's some reviews on Amazon that are testament to how badly I did. So um, it doesn't need to be very expensive, but I would say save up, if necessary, for an editor, at least a proofreader, to make sure that the, your, your book is as free of errors as possible. Um, and then also look at the first thing that people see when they, they're browsing Amazon, looking for a book to read. It's not the, the story necessarily, it's the cover. Cover is the thing that sells. So you need to make sure that your cover is professional. So, I mean, again, I'm not artistically minded in that way. I wouldn't know where to begin uh, to, to make my own cover. So I um, invest in a, a reasonable amount of money, certainly not beyond the means of most people, to get someone who is a professional, he makes prof professional book covers, and he does those for me. Um, my, my kind of overall strategy on this is I want my books to be indistinguishable on Amazon's virtual shelves from the books of the traditionally published authors with whom I'm competing. That's great. So that's number five. Be professional is our final one. Thank you very much indeed. I hope you've got something out of this. Thank you very much indeed, Mark. Mark and I have a weekly podcast that's released on a Friday, the self-publishing formula podcast. You can search for that on iTunes. Uh, Mark has a really useful course about setting up a mailing list, which you can find at selfpublishingformula.com. And uh, look on YouTube for our other videos. And uh, hopefully you will be part of the community who are changing the face of publishing around the world. Mm -hmm.